We're going to be going on into game number three, which is going to be Blame Game versus Symbiote Gaming. ZP, Symbiote Gaming is pretty good. Blame Game, I don't think I don't think we've seen them before too much. I am not familiar with them, and I, um, I was trying to work up the ability to troll uh, stuff in Symbiote, but I think I'm going to play it by the book here. But if I think of anything funny and disparaging to throw in Arthalon's way, I will probably do so. <laughs> so take that, Arthalon. All right, guys, so let's get on into the draft and bands for this next game as I'm muting music but lost XSplit. There we go, there's XSplit. Hey, there. All right, cool. So game number three, let's take a look at the draft here. So let's start up our little counter here. So we've got Symbio Gaming, and they actually like to go for some pretty weird compositions uh, lately. But we've got a Rhaegar band coming out here from Blame Game and a Stitches band out here from Symbio Gaming. What are you what are you feeling about those those two bands? So here's why you ban Stitches. Uh, it, and it's not so much a it teams ban Stitches uh, in part because they just don't want to deal with him. He's annoying to play against. You have to play against him completely different than other heroes. So sometimes it'll be a style ban, and oftentimes it can also be uh, you know we think we're better than this team. But Stitches can actually win games, like even if like we play more solid than them because of picks. So it's sort of an insurance band saying, we're going to make the other team have to play as solid as they can to beat us. We're not going to let them get Stitches picks. So there's a variety of reasons, but a Stitches band is super respectable, especially with how strong he is right now. We've got an Uther first pick out here for Narthir from Blame Game. Of course, a very solid pick, and actually I really like the meta of that. We were talking before about... Arguably, uh, Rhaegar and Uther being the best two healers, so getting that first pick, first banning Rhaegar, kind of solidifying those two top supports that um, have kind of been estimated to be the best ones right now. And uh, we've seen, we see the the uh, counter pick of Tychus and Arthas coming out here from Symbio Gaming. Ouch. Dealing with an Arthas Tychus counter pick is harsh. I mean, I, I I'm all for picking good supports, but in the current meta right now, you know, maybe I'll be wrong, but I feel like giving up that much power. Early on, with just how good Arthas and Tychus is, is a very uh, bold decision to say the least. Like this could end up badly for Blame Game, but who's to say? We have four picks left. They could come up with a really good team comp after this. But right now, I'm favoring Symbiote. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing pretty much. I think every game that Arthas was on one team, that team actually no, I'm sorry. First game, uh, Wildfire didn't have Arthas, did they? Two Ark had, Wild, uh, had Arthas, so. Still Arthas, very strong pick. We have a Falstad and a Zeratul coming out here from Blame Game. Um, Void Prison probably going to be the pick here for Zeratul. Shock and Awe going to be coming out here for that uh, that Falstad. And we've actually seen that um, two, sorry, Wildfire used that combination very well in the first game. Do you think that's probably what they're going to be going for with the setup with the Divine Storm, possibly? Uh, very possible. Again, you know, as I said back at the other Zeratul pick, Void Prison is super versatile. There's so many ways you can use it. You can use it to say, you know, say Odin's in the back and there's people up front. You Void Prison the Odin. You don't have to deal with the Odin annihilating your team, literally. Like, one of his skills is called Annihilate. <laughs> you don't have to deal with Tychus annihilating your team. You don't have to deal with, you know, some, maybe uh, you Void Prison the entire backline and you kill the Arthas. Maybe you combo it with your Uther Falstad. Void Prison goes with everything. But yeah, it's great. <laughs> but yeah, it's great. Yeah, and I mean, that could possibly just really kind of get rid of a lot of the uh, hard engage coming out here from Arthas. We have a Tassadar. Oh man, they don't even need the Rhaegar. They've got Tychus Tassadar out here for Symbiote Gaming and a Tyrael for Dreadnought. Yeah, and Tyrael, of course, is a very strong pick. Uh, you know, it, it kind of gets thrown in. He's not usually a first tier pick. Like, it's rare that you'll see him get first uh, picked or banned. Mm -hmm. so, or sometimes he will get banned as uh, sort of a thing. Not so much that you're worried that the other team will pick him early, but, you know, comps where you don't want to pick him, but you also want the other team to have him. Right. But, you know, for a fourth pick, very solid pickup on Tyrael. Very tanky team. I mean, you stop and think about it. If you go in on Symbiote right now, Ar you know, Tychus is going to Odin. Arthas is, I don't need to explain. Ty you know, Tessar is going to E, and Tyr or Tessar himself is pretty durable, so. It's going to be hard to kill people in Symbiote this game. I just realized that they misspelled Ko's name. It's Kaya, which all I can think of is K Ya Ya <laughs> Ya Ya. Um, so we've got Echo and Fetus in a tube. That's a very interesting handle there for Team Blame Game. Um, we've got Echo picking Witch Doctor and Diablo going to be going in on Fetus in a tube. I don't even know if I want to say that more than once, so I'm just going to call him Diablo for the rest of the game. Um, but we've got. <laughs> yeah, I was. Gonna, yeah, I, I agree. Like I. 
I acknowledge that that is the name of the player, but I am not saying the name of the player. Like, I'm going to say you fetus. Might... Even fetus makes... Anyway. Um... Yeah, no, just no, <laughs> no. Like, you are justified here, Shaq. You're justified. <laughs> Hey man, I can't I can't judge another man's uh, another man's actions. So Diablo Witch Doctor Zeratul Falstad uh, Uther going to be coming out here for Team Blame Game, and Mad Toomey's going to be picking his last pick. So far though, they've got Tacit Arterial, uh, Arthas, Tychus, Malf- probably going to be Brightwing Malfurian or Malfurian. Or, oh, Malf- Malfurian or Brightwing? Well, yeah. Either or, uh, but probably Brightwing of the two. I mean, Brightwing, is, but Malfurian could also work. Yeah, I'm, I'm really actually hoping to see probably a bright wing out of this because we're <laughs> going to be seeing that Witch Doctor as well as um, the Witch Doctor and, and maybe even possibly negating that Uther, but Malfurion is going to be the last pick here, so ZP's showing that he is yet again more knowledgeable than I, but that's exactly why we brought you on here, ZP's, because you're just so smart. Yeah, well, let me just say that uh, you probably need to add the UI as just a phrase I noted that, well... We're misspelling every part of Symbiote's names. You might as well uh, change Mad Timmy to Mad Tammy. <laughs> like, just change <laughs> Mad the whole Tammy. Time. I'm going to start calling him Mad Tammy regardless. <laughs> just... Anyway. Um, so we're going to be getting on into this game. It's going to be on Black Hearts Bay. So pretty pretty good um, synergy there for a Symbiote uh, to have Black Hearts Bay for them. Because I think that... Um, Arthas takes those chests very quickly as well as they have a lot of people who can kind of stay in lane by themselves Which is gonna allow them to get some really good soaking throughout the lanes. What are you thinking about some of the uh, the advantages that blame games gonna have with their composition? Um, hard to say I mean the early game for symbiote here is really strong I, So, you know Arthas himself of course one of the best runners in the game Tychus actually, you know not always seen as a powerhouse of runner, but can be played that way can be very effective uh, Tyrael, an incredibly strong laner. Uh, you know, in terms of Tassar, also a very strong. Like Tassar and Ty- Tassadar and Tyrael are two best laners in the game. Arthas is one of the best gankers. Tychus is, you know, pretty good as well. The only weak point in their early game, which isn't even a weak point if he's partnered with other people, is Malfurion. But you know, they have this strong of an early game comp and roll black hearts. I mean, they should just buy a lottery ticket right now because they, <laughs> this is a very good set for Symbi. All right, guys, let's get on into the game. ZP, are you ready to go? I am ready. All right, so let's hit the button at three, two, one, go. All right, so we do have Blackheart's Bay. Once again, guys, we're using um, MP4s here for the recording because of the patch broke the last uh, set of uh, replays that we could use. So we've got Symbiote Gaming over here on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, we've got Blame Game. And it looks like we've got all five... Look like they want to go to the happy face in the middle. The happy face, that little that little watchtower. Uh, if you look at the mini map, it's a nice little happy it, face. It's a full guy, by the way. If you look around, like to the left side, the right side, and down, like you can see everything. The hands, the feet, it's all there. And there is going to be an early fight here. It looks like, although yeah, uh, Simbad is only bringing up four, <laughs> so this should be interesting. Uh, see how this turns out. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good call by them. They are going to get to the watchtower very first, and, uh, first, so they're going to be able to see if there's going to be a hard engage out here from Blame Game. Uh, and they're playing very nicely and safe. Um, Blame Game's gonna stay three man top, kind of showing that they've got three man, uh, three people at top. But uh, one thing to keep in in mind is that at 50 seconds uh, into the game is when those chests are gonna spawn um, at the top and bottom of the map. Yeah, and right now Symbiote, what they're doing is they're clearing out the middle lane, and they might be going to clear out the top here. But the base idea is you know you soak the early lanes, and then you get the chest, and it makes things easier for you. Though they did not really manage to push out top, so they might sacrifice some soak for. Uh, Top chest? I guess we'll see. Arthalon's in position for bottom chest, even though we're not zoomed in on it right now. Oh, we do have four versus five out here. Symbiote is going to look like they're going to get a pretty good engagement. Phoenix is going to go down here. Echo now taking a lot of damage, but actually, seems like uh, Arthalon's, uh, sorry, Soldier's going to go down, but Turtle Tosser is just barely going to get out of there. Narthir gets grabbed by an Entangly Roost. Dreadnought going to get the last hit there, and that's actually going to be a three for one for Symbiote? Or two for one, two for one for Zimbabwe. Uh, I, I think it was a three for one actually, because just the respawn time is so quick. Uh, you don't know. I, I might be counting wrong, is hard. Mad Timmy taking a lot of damage. I was gonna say, uh, geez, in our fight going out there, but they're told backing out. And again, uh, just a note from the last time I played Black Hearts or the last uh, game we cast in here, Symbiote with the early lead here at the team they have. Uh, it's gonna be very hard for Blame Game to get back in it if they get too far behind here. And uh, they're very smartly putting one person in each lane, and the the people who are very good at solo laning, we've got the Malfurion at top lane going against a Falstad. Um, Tassadar is another really good solo laner, and Tychus as well. 
Uh, Arthlon is going to get hard engaged upon here. He's got five coins. He's got to be very careful. A beautiful body block coming out here from Superturber, uh, Super oh. but it's not going to be enough. Arthlon's going to barely get away. I think that was a away. missed opportunity. Like, truth be told, Arthlon, uh, potentially a little bit too far out there, and that could have been a kill. Zeratul very good there, and Arthlon just barely squeaking away. That would have been huge for Blame Game if they'd actually gotten the kill. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, Echo's getting engaged on the grenade back, the Arthas, the Tira, the everything. He just got erased. A little bit of good false stat harassment met to me up there, though. It's kind of hard to bring Malfurion out of way. Yeah, Malfurion's just such a very, very good hero. He's got a lot of sustain. He's got his own heals. got a lot of damage, too. He's pretty good at uh, keeping those lanes pushed or at least, you know, in, in some sort of control. Uh, Ko, of course, dealing with a Diablo as well as an Uther. Uther now finally going to come down here. And uh, Simba could have not only Siege Giants pushing down bot lane, but Knights as well. Arthalon being incredibly forward, being a half-health Tychus. Yeah, Barthelon, if one thing uh, about his play, it gets him into trouble some games, but really rewards him in others, that he plays on the edge. <laughs> yeah. It gets him ahead when it works out, and... Well, really Arthur, you know, he's got a, he knows exactly what his heroes can take um, for the most part. I mean, he's got a lot of experience in the MOBA scene. He was an uh, ex-Challenger League force, uh, League of Legends, so... Pretty good player coming out here, and uh, Simbayo gonna actually evacuate the third, yeah, the third uh, lane. That's a little bit surprising. A uh, Night Ogre push. I mean, granted, it is early. The Mercs aren't that strong, but there is a possibility that they could have brought more people down to go for a big push there. But instead, opting for the safer play of backing out, getting the Mercs, they do have a Merc Mem advantage. They do have the coin advantage. You know, maybe they're just uh, playing the safe way in Black Hearts. And you can do that in Black Hearts. You don't have to take risks on this map when you're ahead. The other team has to take risks. So it's perfectly understandable. And uh, yeah, so they're going to grab those Knights at top. Arthalon, yet again, going to get another whole chest pretty much for himself. Um, Mad Timmy's trying to zone out Fetus in a tube. Uh, looks like he's going to be pretty successful, and Simbio now going to come out and force four man coming in on that chest. And uh, they're just stacking up coins. I mean, so Arthalon's got ten. Oh no! Oh, no. Arthalon just oh, ten it's coins. Like Dreadnought going to come in here. Although Dreadnought able to get the coins, uh, mopping up what could have been a really big coin swing. Oh man! Remember what I said about Arthalon before? Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> I remove all positive commentary about Arthalon. I'm going to get kicked from the heroes chat for just for saying that, but that's okay. It looks like Blame Game is going to get a turn in. Meanwhile, Malfury is going to be pushing top lane, and that's actually be a really good thing here for Symbiote. Uh, looks like they're going to be able to grab those two towers and possibly the gate in the middle as well. Um, and so even though they do lose that uh, that turn in, they are going to get a pretty good advantage here with the Knights. Oh, if Mad Timmy was able to get out, but unfortunately it doesn't look like he's going to be able to KO to come in here. Oh, throw out a shield and all the disengage! Out. Wow. A very, that was so surprising very... we almost talked over each other there. <laughs> That's okay. We're both excited. We're both very passionate. That's all I can see from it. Yeah, that looked like a dead Malfurion, but uh, he squeaked away. I, I don't know if, like, I just feel like Blame Game could have been a little bit more aggressive there. Maybe they thought there was more symbiote uh, weighing in the wings. You know, they don't have the I, full I think, screen map packs that we have right now. I think that's actually what was happening. It was uh, uh, There was two people from symbiote who were missing, and so they were very scared that those people were going to show up. So very good map awareness, I had to say, but I actually wasn't looking at the minimap at that exact moment, so I might be just making stuff up right now. Uh, they did take out the top, the middle tower for the middle lane, so that is actually going to take out the fort. Echo going to be engaged upon it right now, and it looks like he is just barely going to get out of here. A lot. Oh, no! Oh, the Venom is going to take him out from Arthas, and uh, Arthalon's going to be able to get out of here. Just a little word on that, and Venom is the... And Venom and Moonwell interaction is hilarious because the Moonwell will say that like you're in the green and you're not going to die, but, but it's a yeah, lie. The Venom yeah. will still kill you. And Venom ticks for more than uh, Moonwell will heal for until, I think, level 13 or so. I think and Venom starts falling off too much, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But yeah, Blame Game... Uh, taking a lot of taking a lot of hits right now. Um, they're down a fort. Uh, it's level nine to level ten, so they have to be very very careful. They can't really engage here at the chest uh, too hard. It looks like yeah, they're they're keeping their their wits about them. They're kind of staying split up. Um, there is they do see that KO is top though, so they know they can get a five v four engagement as long as they can get level ten. I think they're going to be in a pretty good situation. Fees coming in here, going to be knocking out Arthalon from his overkill. Yeah, and the thing there is that even if they wanted to go in, I mean, they didn't have everyone there for one uh, blame game, that is, and, you know, they weren't level 10 at the start of that, so they had the backup until they hit level 10. You just do not want to fight another team 9v11. It will not end well for you. You need heroic abilities to win team fights. Um, but level 10 did hit for blame game. They've got full in force at the chest. It looks like I think they're going to get another turn, and we actually can't see. Superber is going to take a couple hits. And uh, actually, Witch Doctor's bot lane, so they have to back out here. 
Um, looks like Symbiote's trying to make something happen. They are going to engage on Diablo. Diablo is a very tanky hero, but is he too tanky for this situation? Yes, he is. And uh, looks like Symbiote is going to get yet another turn in. And right now what you're seeing here is that Blame Game has sort of been on the back foot for a while now. They're not actually that far behind level-wise, but they are behind coin-wise, and Symbiote is, in general, uh, not playing as aggressive as I thought with the team they have here, but very content to just go the safe way, get Merc camps, and again, make Blame Game beat them, which is a great way of playing this map. They, you, know, you choke people out of this map, and it mm -hmm. works well. And they've been doing, yeah, exactly that. It's just they just keep going for those Merc camps and pretty much just forcing... Um, Blame games have to deal with those every time, and every time that they go to go do, you know, one of those Merc camps and deal with it, uh, Symbiote's jumping to the other side of the map, grabbing a whole bunch of coins, grabbing a tower, grabbing this, grabbing a fort, and that's exactly what we're seeing right here. They're, they even have the, the Grave Golem pushing a lane that's already got the fort down, but that's okay, because now it's going to put pressure on that keep, which is going to force Blame Game to have to respond to that, and what so, Symbiote's going to grab for an advantage later on is going to be the question. What Blame Game did there makes a lot of sense in a lot of games, like trading knights for golem. Like, the golem's better, but it's usually not that bad. Except that the top fort was already down, which means mm -hmm. that this golem, full HP, is going to go straight on the keep. And it's actually going to be very hard to defend this keep. Uh, definitely a misjudgment by Blame Game here in regards to where they stood on Mercs, because defending this is going to be hard. And not only that, but Symbiote's also got level 13 over level 12. Now, there's a very good... Void Prison coming out here, Fetus in the Tomb now, trying to engage and get a really good engagement. There's a pretty good Apocalypse that's going to come out here. Dreadnought taking a good amount of damage, but not enough to actually win here. Turtles also getting a very good shock and all, but not enough. A beautiful Howling Blast from Soldier here is going to stop them, and there's actually a complete five-man wipe out here on Blame this Game. Actually be game. And this I is think a, no. this is game, in fact. There's <laughs> not much that they can really do. Diablo is back up, but Arthlon's in Odin. Mad Timmy, KO, and everybody else are just completely wailing on the palace core. And that core is made out of paper early on, so if you can get a keep down that early, you can just crush it. And, and that was, crush it, they did. Crush it, they did. That poor little merman has fallen into pieces and turned into a crystal. I don't exactly understand how that works lore-wise, but, you know, it's the Nexus. Nothing makes sense. I, yeah, I don't really <laughs> get the core and the crystal. Like, that hasn't been properly explained. You have, like, a statue, and then you kill, and then a crystal starts shining, like... What What is the crystal? What is its story? Can we um, get the background information on the crystal? Yeah, actually, uh, it comes from uh, Iyer. Uh, it's actually um, one of the uh, the pylons uh, from the Protoss race. Um, they finally uh, understood that they needed to construct additional pylons, and they built it inside the core. And that's why the core is so important. It's actually an Artosis pylon. It's just powering Artosis everything. Now, I didn't. It wasn't fine, but once you said Artosis Pylon, now <laughs> now the world makes sense to me. Thank you, champ. It's every. It's powering everything that's going on in the Nexus. So as soon as that Artosis Pylon is down, everything's just broken and dead. Um. So guys, Symbiote Gaming is gonna win game number three here for the Heroes Pro, uh, Premier League, hosted by Nexus Champ. Again, check out nexuschamp.com. Um. Your casters today. Uh, is are myself. I'm not going to name myself, but I am going to name ZPs who did a pretty good Murloc impression before. That is a lie. Your Murloc impression was far better. Mine was half-hearted at best. All right. Well, so guys, uh, I need another impression for ZPs to try before we come back from the break. So nope. do me the favor. Suggest the best impression from a Blizzard game that you could possibly come up with. I'm thinking Orc Peon, or possibly. Hmm. Maybe... What other Blizzard games have you played, ZP? Pretty sure I've played everything. Every uh, single one? Uh, uh, maybe, I want to actually, hear your best I... butcher when we come back from break, guys. Oh, <laughs> this God. is the Heroes Premier League. We'll be right back. <laughs> 